might as well lift up your hands, saints. Lift up your hands. The Lord's doing something new. Ho! Oh. <laughs> Ho! Oh. <laughs> lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. The Lord is doing something new. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, it's a new day, a new way. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Father, we're not asking you to come in your own gentle way. We're asking you to just come. Rack us this morning. Rack us this morning, Father God. Hallelujah. Come the way you want to come. Move the way you want to move. Open up our spirit, Father God, to receive from your spirit. For you're speaking to us this morning, spirit to spirit. And I just thank you to Heavenly Father for your presence. It's building in this place. There's such a, a rich presence, like Pastor Alex said. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Oh, hallelujah. Don't let this moment pass you by. This is your moment. This is your hour. Don't let this pass by. Many of you have loved ones on your heart this morning. You don't want to see them lost. Then lift up their name in this realm right now. Your brothers and your sisters, your husbands, your wives, lift up their names in this place. Call out their names for the Lord is hearing your cry. Hallelujah, we lift up our hands. We lift up our hands this morning, oh God, because we trust you. We're depending on you for those things that we cannot do ourselves. We put our hope in you, God, against all odds this morning. We trust in you. Despite what the circumstances look like, despite how high the waves are, despite how hard those waves are crashing against the shore, against all odds, we trust in you. Holy Spirit, just continue to pour out. Pour out, pour out, pour out. For we need you, Lord, and we cannot go another moment without you. How can we believe for our tomorrows and our next month and our next year unless you're a part of it, God? We are blind without you. We are blind without your revelation. We're blind without your word that is a, like a lamp unto our feet, showing us the way and directing our path. We stumble around like blind men unless we know the Lord in this hour. And Father, we pray for our loved ones, our brothers and our sisters, our husbands and our wives, our daughters and our sons, our prodigals, oh God. We cry out this morning for them. We cry out, God, and we ask you to move upon their lives. Let your mercy hover over them wherever they are this morning. If they're pushing a needle in their arm, we're asking you for mercy. Hover over them. Oh, Lord, we need you. Our family need you. Those in our sphere of influence need you this morning. We have so many answers that men have given to us, but none of them work. It is only you, Father God, that gives us life and life more abundantly. It is only you, my Father, that knows how to heal the wounded soul. It is only you, my Father, that has the word that could cut between soul and spirit. It is only you that satisfies. And when we come into your presence this morning, we come with thanksgiving. We come with singing and with praise. 
for you alone are our strength and shield. You alone makes our heart yield. And this morning we yield to you, Holy Spirit. We yield to you, Father. We yield the bills we have to pay, the car we have to fix, the marriage that needs repairing, the daughter that's run away, the son that doesn't know her name. We yield them to you, Father. We yield those opportunities that are in front of our eyes. We yield to you, Father. Move, Father, in your way this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Shade Bahaya Kalu. Hallelujah. She Mama. Pastor Alex's word this morning confirms the word of the Lord. When Pastor Alex was giving that prophetic word, he said, I do not come bringing judgment. I come bringing love. And that's the word of the Lord this morning. He does not come to judge he does not come to tear down our lives. He comes to bring love, which heals, restores, which renews our strength. And that brings me right into the message this morning. I want you to know that the Lord understands. I would like uh, if someone can put the scripture on the board for me. On the, it's going to be Jonah 4. 10 to 11. And after Jonah had been through all that he had been through, his rebellion against God's call on his life, and when God called him back to fulfill that, uh, <laughs> that call, Jonah went and spoke to the people of Nineveh. But at the end of the four chapters of Jonah, the Lord had a question. And it's Jonah 4, 10 to 11. And it says, but the Lord said, he's speaking to Jonah, you have been concerned about this plant. And this plant is a plant that the Lord had brought into Jonah's life in that moment to protect him from the heat of the sun. But the plant that came withered and died within the same night. And the Lord said to Jonah, you have been concerned about this plant because you see Jonah was fussing about the plant. He was angry. The plant died, withered away. And the Lord said, you have been concerned about this plant. Though you did not tend to it or make it grow. This plant is a concern to you, Jonah? This plant? It sprang up overnight, and it died overnight. And then he said, should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh? The Lord is going to ask us a question this morning about those in our lives. For you see, before I came, I was on my knees crying about those in my life that need the Lord. Those who I don't want to see lost. And I cried because I knew there was judgment in my heart. And sometimes we see those who are broken. Their lives have been torn apart. And we think there is no answer. Not even God can save them. We judge harshly those who we think we cannot save them. And so we judge the situation harshly. And we think God can't save you. You're a hopeless cause. God can't save you. But you see, that was Jonah's heart for that city of Nineveh. Why would you want to save them? Can't you see their sin? Can't you see how hard they, their hearts are, God? 
Yeah, we have people in our lives just like that. Why would you care about them, God? But God turns around and asks us a question. Should I not have concern for those who have hurt you? Should I not have concern for the city where you live? Even though we judge it harshly and we call our cities names, we say things about our city, our governmental systems, we say things. But the Lord reaches back with this compassion and, and asks all the time, should I not show concern? Should I not show concern to those who are living on my street? The people where I shop and I see them every day, should I not show concern? Should I not show concern for the city of Hamilton, Toronto, Oakville, Mississauga, Brampton, Brantford? Should I not show concern even if they've hurt us, even if they have turned away from us? The Lord still asks every day and he still asks when we pray when we say lord we've had enough of evangelism lord we've had enough of feeding the poor we've had enough they're too hard they're too difficult the lord comes with the prophetic word this morning i do not come bringing judgment I come bringing love. That was the word of the Lord this morning. And many of us who are at the altar today have someone in our lives that we have pretty much given up on. We've shut the door. There's nothing left. Our relationship is over. I, I've seen too much. I've heard too much. We're done here. But the Lord in his mercy, the story of Jonah is about Jonah's concern with the mercy of God. He wanted God to be filled with judgment because of what he saw. The degradation of the city, the moral compass that have gone off the charts when it came to sin and holiness. He has seen it all in the city where he lives. And we have seen it all in our city where we live. And the Lord is telling us this morning, if you are called to evangelize your city, this is not the time to give up. This is not the time to walk away. This is not the time to say no. If you are called to evangelize your family, this is not the time to say no. The Lord is encouraging us, do not give up on the call on your life. Do not give up on your concern for the lost because he will not give up on his mercy for the lost, the broken, and the abused. Every day we walk past them. On my way to church, there was a man under, under the bridge walking with a suitcase. It was like everything he had in the world. His clothes were tattered and torn. And the Lord said to me, should I not show concern for his welfare? Should I not show concern for their well-being? And every day when people come in to find food here, to find some groceries, we are to be more concerned with the fact that they are lost than just handing them a bag of food and sending them out the door. The Lord asked the question, should I not 
show concern for them. We speak, we pray, we sing that the Lord is good, his mercy is from everlasting to everlasting, but there's a time when the rubber hits the road in our lives and we can walk away or we can turn around and say, God loves you. I have heard so many testimonies during camp of people who have turned the tables and transform people's lives with the word of the Lord. Should I not show concern? I've got to tell you, the Lord brought some tests into my life recently in my workplace. I work in a hospital, and he brought this young woman into my sphere of influence, and I've got to tell you folks, it is not easy to love. It's not that she's on drugs, she's not messed up, it's just that I think she hates me. I don't, she hasn't had anything good to say about me. She's talking about me behind my back all the time. And I'm doing my job. I am not gonna turn around and reciprocate and talk behind her back. I've decided that God has shown concern for her life. And that if she does not know the Lord, at some point she will be lost eternally. So you see, folks, when Jonah took offense to what he saw and what he heard in his city, he made a judgment. That's it. You should die. And Jonah was angry with God because he cared about such people. He thought, if I feel this way, if I'm offended, then God should be offended. Because we sometimes believe that God is like us. Oh, what a wonderful thing to know God is not like us. His heart is not like ours. His thoughts are higher than ours. His ways are higher than ours. So when I'm receiving persecution from someone or anyone, I have to remember God shows concern for that person. It could be a business deal that's gone wrong. Maybe you've been robbed lots of money. Maybe somebody broke into your home and stole out of your home. But let me tell you something. If someone does not touch that life, they will be lost. And it's hard to love when someone has offended us. It's hard to love when we have received such onslaught from the enemy through someone that you thought loved you, through your brother, your sister, through your friend. Oh, betrayal happens to us. How many have experienced betrayal, especially by someone you love? That's a hard thing. It's a hard thing to be rejected by someone we love. But the Lord poured his compassion into my heart this morning when I was praying. He said, should I not show mercy on that which I created? And I began to get this revelation Mercy was given to me at the cross. Mercy was poured out to me. Mercy came running to me to see me set free, to see me saved. Well, now that I have this mercy, this mercy is for me to give. The mercy that we have received is mercy for us to give, to give, to give, to give. If we want to truly walk with the Lord, 
then we've got to truly get a revelation of who Jesus Christ is and who Jesus Christ was when he walked those three years in ministry, how he acted, how he treated people, how he showed mercy. Because there are times, people of God, when I don't want to show mercy, where I, want, I would rather see judgment than mercy. And then I have to repent because I remember how good God is and how good he has been to me. He says, I do not come bringing judgment. I come bringing love. And so many things that I've heard in the sphere of influence where I am, so many things that I've heard, someone has done this, somebody, it just shocks me or just changes my heart about how I see those in my family or those who I call my friends. But I've got to tell you, it's not about me, is it, Pastor Patty? It's not about me. It's not about me. It's about the one whose life hangs in the balance. It's not about me. The Lord wants to use me to bring life to someone else, to show mercy to others. Should I not show concern for your brother, for your sister? Should I not show concern for that one who hurt you, the husband who left, the wife who left? Should I not show concern this morning? for their welfare, for their well-being, because I'm their creator, and they are the clay. I will go under a bridge to find them. I will go in the darkest of places to pull them back up. I will do it because I love them. I did not come to show judgment, but mercy. And this morning, as Pastor Alex spoke, and as we're moving into this new season, Pastor Alex is telling me how the Blessing Center even now is increasing with many more families coming for food. There's opportunities here to show mercy, to show love. Because let me tell you, I've been in uh, evangelism events for many, many years through women's ministries. We've worked with women on the streets. We have brought them into the churches. We have fed them and clothed them. And let me tell you, they steal from me. They take from me. They lie to me. But it never stopped because God said, I want you to show mercy to them. I've experienced it. I've experienced them, how they come. These are people who are lost. They don't know any better. And that's what the Lord said to Jonah. He said, these people don't even know their right hand from their left hand. How is it that you expect me to walk away from them? Should I not show them mercy? They don't know their right hand from their left. One of the women came into uh, the events that I used to have in Toronto, and she said to me, I refuse to take a bath. I refuse to take a shower. I have not washed for months. And I said, why would you do this? And she said, so I won't get raped when I walk down the street. Because men will stay away from me. And that's how she defended herself. That's how she was protecting herself. Should I not show mercy, says the Lord. Should I not have concern? 
Another woman that came to my event, I used to have events where there's 300 women in the church and they would be there for the day. We would hear their stories. We would feed them, clothe them, and give them the gospel. We would tell them, we would tell them the truth. And one of the women said to me, one night I, I'm sleeping in my car because that's the only place I have to sleep is in my car. And I woke up one night and this man was on top of me in my car. Should I not show concern? Even so, says the Lord, send I you. Should he not show concern? This is our city. This is our Hamilton. We've lived here for many years. I've lived here for most of my life. Should I not show concern, says the Lord, of that one walking under the bridge with a suitcase and all his possessions? Should I not show concern with the mother with three kids who have no food? Should I not show concern for the city of Hamilton? Should I judge them? Should I walk away? The Lord is coming in like a warrior in this city. And the Lord is breaking the bands and the chains that have been on the people for so many years. There's renewal happening in this city of Hamilton. There's a breakthrough in this city of Hamilton. And I believe it's because of the prayers of the saints. There are intercessors that I've been in contact with all over this city who are praying for that revival fire that the Lord has spoken of because that revival is coming and he's preparing us, his people, to receive what is about to happen. The prophetic word spoke about that today. There is revival coming, but we need to prepare the seats that are empty, we should be praying over these seats so that when they come in, they will be touched by the Lord. They will be moved by the Spirit because this is the transformation center. This is where people come to be transformed in their spirit, their soul, and in their body. It's not how deep of a sin they're in. It's not how deep the depth of sin that they walk. The Lord says, should I not show concern? Sure, we have been hurt when we evangelize. Sure, we have been broken because we've seen so much and we think we don't have the answer, but God has the answer and this is our time. Get ready, people of God. Get yourself ready. Find the altars in your home, the altars in your church, for this is the hour and the day when the Lord is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh in this city. This is our time. This is the time when we will see transformation and the altars will be filled with children, children who are in broken homes, children who are being abused, children who don't know their left from their right. The altars will be filled with children. I see it very clearly for the Lord is showing concern for them. The ones who are in school, I could not believe when my son finished high school. And that's when he told me. He said, Mom, you wouldn't believe that I could buy a gun in the bathroom in my high school. Do you know I could buy a knife? I could buy whatever I want. All I had to do was go to the bathroom. And all these years I'm thinking my son is in this great school, everything's okay, everything's just fine. And then he tells me what they face every day in school. You can buy a gun in your bathroom? What? 
Is this is happening to our kids? And you already know all the other stuff that are happening to our kids. Should I not show concern? Should I not show concern for the jail, Barton Street jail that we drive past? Should I not show concern, says the Lord? Who is evangelizing to them? Who is walking with the children home from school? Who is doing this? Should I not show concern? Is my problem only about me? Is it about my bills? What I'm going to eat today? Where I'm going to go to work? How much gas is going to cost? This is my concern. We need to give our head a shake because our little problems that we deal with are nothing compared to what others are dealing with around us every day. Another one of the women has a full-time job, full-time job, but she cannot afford housing. She lives in her car. And she goes into the centers every day to take a shower to get ready for work. No one at work knows this is her life. But she lives in her car. She eats in her car. She sleeps in her car. And she has a full-time job. And she cannot afford an apartment or a one-room place to live. These are the people that are all around us. Should I not show concern, says the Lord. For you see, the Lord wants to shake us out of that, uh, that, that place where Jonah was. Get rid of them, Lord. What do you want to save them for? <laughs> we forget that God created our hands and our feet, even so that we could feel when we touch something that's how minute that, that his love goes. That's how deep it goes. So that we will have everything that we need in the body that we are living in while we're on earth. He shows concern. And he wants to see people set free. This morning... And this afternoon and tomorrow, I want you to think about who you're going to meet on your way to work. Have they ever heard anything about the Lord from you? Does anyone know that I'm a Christian? You know, one of the best things that happened to me, oh my goodness, I'm so glad. When Dr. Russ came to where I work for treatment when he was sick, he did a little survey about me through the, with the nurses. And I was so glad, you know, because one of the nurses told him, well, Dr. Ross, if we want any kind of uh, a religious moment or a religious event, we go to Anne Marie. She's our go-to girl. We always say, Anne Marie, take me to church. And I was so glad somebody told him that because I thought, you know, I've been there for years. My pastor walks in and nobody knows I'm a Christian. Nobody has a testimony about me. That would be scary. That would be scary. But someone said, yes, we know Anne Marie. We know she loves the Lord. We see her on Facebook stuff all the time. We know what she does. And we know that she prays for the staff and they go to her for praying because they do. They come to me and ask me to pray for them. They come to me and ask me to sit with them. People need to know that I'm a Christian. Or why am I even walking with the Lord? Do you remember the apostles? How great their ministry was. People knew they were saved. 
I don't go shout from the rafters or punch people in the head to know the Lord, but I am available for you if you need to know the Lord, if you need to know something about the Lord, if you want prayer, if you want someone to talk to, they know they can talk to me. We are to be available wherever we are. We are to be available when we're volunteering, when we're in our households. My family were together last night and there was such a great conversation at the dinner table and it was so good. I want you to know that my mom has been that matriarch in our family. It doesn't matter who we bring home. It doesn't matter what religion they are. When we are praying for uh, supper or when we're about to pray to bless the food, everybody is in that kitchen. I don't care what religion you're serving. This is my house. My mom makes the rules. If you're coming in my house, you're praying to my God. That's been the rules in my family for years. Nobody comes into my mother's house and prays to their God. It's not happening because she's established the rules. She's established this house is a house of prayer. And we need to establish our lives and our house because people are looking for unshakable Christianity. Unshakable Christianity. We're not shaken with temptation. We're not shaken by the things of the world. When they come to us, they want to know we didn't change. We didn't change. And it's important in this time when the Lord is preparing his people for revival that we go deep with God and we clean out those things that need to go. We are loved. We are a people who are loved. We are accepted in the beloved. The Lord did not come to judge. He came to show us his love. And I want everybody to stand this morning because I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. I want us to understand that revival isn't just going to show up. It just doesn't just show up. I was watching a video yesterday of Steve Hill, and when he had those, I don't know if many of you know Steve Hill, but he had those incredible uh, uh, revival meetings, evangelistic meetings, where people lined up down the, uh, uh, the street, round the corner, just to wait to get into the church. They were waiting to get into church. And they would start in the morning, church started at 7, the door opened at six. People were there all day in line waiting to get in to the church. Well, God wants that fire in us again. He wants that fire in us and on us and working through us again. This is a great time. It's a season of transition. It's a season where the Lord wants the city transformed where people will stop using his name as a swear word, where his name will be honored. We are his chosen people. We are his Gideon's army. And we need to get ready and walk that walk. We need to talk that talk. We need to be ready for what the Lord is going to do next. Because you know, we can't keep up with Holy Spirit. He's just all too much, too great, too amazing, too lovely. Father God, I just thank you for this morning that your Gideon's army is here. They occupy somewhere in the city. They occupy somewhere in the workplace. They occupy somewhere in the school, in their home. And Father, I pray that you will anoint them afresh, that you will break off all fear. And we pray like Paul prayed, that you would give us boldness. Give us boldness to speak the word as it should be spoken. 
Give us boldness in this hour. Help us, Lord, not to be afraid or be intimidated by the enemy. But God, when you say, reach out to that one and pray, let us do it so we can prepare for revival. God, I pray for that fresh anointing over this army of God. Let them link their hands together like um, Joel's army. Let them walk together in unity like Joel's army. Let them stand strong on it, that the enemy would not move them. The enemy would not shake them. They would be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth fruit in its season. Its leaf shall not wither and whatsoever it does will prosper. Make us like trees, God, planted by the river of waters. Let us be a fruitful people in this city, oh God. We thank you for Pastor Patty and Pastor Alex who have laid down their life for the gospel. We ask you to bless them afresh, anoint them afresh, Father, with that uh, anointing of revival over their lives. And let those in leadership and those around them move in unity with the vision for this city. Let us come together in unity, Father, working together in love to see the mandate of heaven come to earth. I pray for strong intercessors in this house, Father. I pray for those prayer warriors that you're raising up, Father. I pray for those watchmen that need to be upon the wall. And I pray for the Gideons and the Esters. Oh God, that you're calling in this hour. I pray for the Mordecais again in this generation. Help us to occupy until you come. We thank you for what you're doing in this house and in this hour, dear Lord. We thank you, we thank you for truly you are preparing us for revival and an outpouring God like we have never seen before. We thank you for this day in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.